Hello everyone, Dr. John Bartimus here today to create a video that dives deeper and more accurately into the immune system and how the immune system works. If you've followed me for any amount of time, you realize that I have uh, previous videos on how the immune system works using the symphony analogy and today I just want to take it deeper to be to make it more accurate for you and with more accuracy we have more information and I think it's important because in working on your cases it's important to know that the immune system is very complex so the mainstream medical system or the conventional medical system many times when working with autoimmunity they choose to just give high powered drugs that are complete immune suppressants so they just take the whole immune system and suppress it the problem with that is that if you listen to the side effects on the commercials you'll hear um, increased risk of cancers, increased risk of infections and that's because not only are they su suppressing the arm of the immune system that may be playing a role in driving the specific autoimmunity in that person but they're suppressing all other arms of the immune system including surveillance for pathogens and uh, carcinogenic cells so obviously that's not a great idea or, or the best way to treat it. So what we'd like to do is understand the immune system and its complexity but then use that understanding to determine which arm or which pathways of the immune system need to be addressed and which arms are okay that we can leave alone and not suppress but still benefit from their surveillance. So if you've seen the previous videos you'll recognize the um, the symphony analogy, if this is your first time, we'll go through it again. But the immune system, the analogy is a symphony, okay? So forgive me, I'm not musically inclined, so I may be ignorant to the instruments that are in an actual symphony, but this is what works for me, so hopefully it works for you. Um, the symphony is made up of a bunch of different instruments, so we have our stringed instruments, we have our brass, we have our percussion, we have our, our flute, clarinets, you know, whatever that branch of it is called, and we have the piano. So each one of these instruments represents uh, a T-cell polarization or a part of the adaptive immune system that when it is presented with uh, a, a, a pathogen or with an infection by the innate immune system, or if it's presented with debris from damaged tissue from an injury or some inflammatory process by the innate immune system, the T cells now mature into one of these polarizations and go do their job. Okay? Now, each one of these polarizations respond to a different assault. So, for example, we have Th1 cells. Th1 cells respond to intracellular infection. So, many times this means viruses. Viruses invade a cell or infect a cell and they basically um, take over the cell's mechanisms to promote replication of themselves. They burst out of the cell and then go infect other cells. So a Th1 response is useful in intracellular infection. A Th2 response responds to pathogens that are too big for a cell to eat up. So an example of that would be parasites. So Th2 cells respond to parasitic infections and then they also respond to or create an allergic response. So heavy in the Th2 side of things are things like eosinophils and mast cells which create histamine responses. So if you're having histamine responses um, or increased allergies and food reactions then you may have a Th2 dominance occurring. Th9 Th9 is a lot like Th2. Um, it's involved in mucus production. It's involved in increased eosinophilic inflammation. So what we can say is Th9 is basically a Th2 response on steroids. So um, Th9, if it gets out of hand, can be very damaging. Um, Th2 and Th9 kind of uh, type diseases you could think of, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, um, chronic dysbiosis, bladder infections, chronic lungs, chronic sinus issues. 
So anywhere there, where there's mucus and hollow organs, that's kind of a Th2, Th9 involved area. Th17 is also involved in those areas. Th17 is surveillance of mucosal and epithelial lining. So again, ears, eyes, nose, throat, sinuses, lungs, GI tract. It's protecting the, the borders or the barriers to the outside world. It's, it's, it's surveilling what's, what we're being exposed to and responding if necessary. So TH17 is involved in extracellular infections. So outside the cell. So this would be, say, bacterial infections, uh, yeast overgrowth, things of that nature. Now, TH17, when we're talking about autoimmune disease, TH17 is a big time driver of the tissue damage that occurs in autoimmune disease. So it doesn't cause autoimmune disease, but if you already have an autoimmune disease on board and you've, you develop a TH17 polarization, that's going to drive worsening of the autoimmune process, it's going to drive flares, and it can potentially drive what's called epitope spreading, which means you, you started with autoimmunity in one tissue, but you develop it in other tissues because of the similarity in the tissues or, or that they look alike from an amino acid sequence standpoint. Sorry to nerd out there. And then lastly, there's a, or not lastly, but next is a Th22 polarization, and this is this is involved in high levels of inflammation. So this really ramps up the inflammatory process. And so when you ramp up inflammation, you ramp up the potential. If it gets out of hand, you ramp, ramp up the potential for further tissue damage, worsening of whatever disease process is occurring. So those are the instruments in the symphony. But if you know anything about a symphony, you realize that it's orchestrated by a conductor. And so the conductor here is known as the T regulatory cells. And those cells promote tolerance and are anti-inflammatory. So whereas the rest of the cells are pro-inflammatory, um, against what they're supposed to deal with, T regulatory cells are anti inflammatory. It's the conductor saying, hey, you, hey, you know, TH17, you guys play for a minute, and then now you calm down, and hey, flutes, it's your turn. Now, flutes, calm down, piano, hit it, piano and percussion at the same time. So the conductor is conducting the orchestra, or conducting the function of the immune system, and making sure, hey, yes. We do have an intracellular infection, so Th1, it is your turn. And then now, no, it's extracellular, so Th17, it's your turn. So the conductor makes sure things are running smoothly, and when they're done playing, it calms it down. So when the inflammatory response should stop here, it calms it down from an anti-inflammatory or tolerogenic perspective. So you can see that the conductor, if the conductor falls off his stool for whatever reason, then we can have chaos in the symphony or in the orchestra. Because these people know how to play their instruments, they don't necessarily know when they're supposed to play and how loud and for how long. They get those cues from the conductor. So in an autoimmune process or in a chronic inflammatory process, chronic immune issue, many times what, what, what's happened is the conductor has fallen off his stool and now certain polarizations have become dominant and, and they aren't going to calm down until we promote other guys starting to play and then put the conductor back on a stool. So these are the nuances and intricacies of an immune response that need to be figured out and addressed in order to properly or optimally address your immune condition. So instead of giving you a big time you know, global immune suppressant that's going to take all these and basically end the show, it's just going to drop the curtain and say show's over, which will increase risk of infection and cancer. We'd rather say, hey, you know, we realize that the instruments are a little out of tune or playing at the wrong time. Let's get the conductor back on a stool and save the life of this show and, and, and basically, you know, show people that, hey, it's worth paying for and it's a healthy symphony, if you get my drift. So we need to figure out immunologically 
where are you at in terms of dominances and imbalances, is the conductor on the stool or not, and whatever we find, we want to correct it or optimize it to the best of our ability without dropping the curtain on the whole thing. I hope that makes sense for you. If you don't get it the first time, definitely watch it again. It is complicated, so if, you're, if your mind's a little bit blown, then you're actually in the right spot because most people don't get it the first time. But this is a big part of figuring out your case and helping you live a life at Optimal. Have a great day.